Hello everyone, Ken here, back with another video for you. As many of you know, or may not know, my focus in my day job is in sports analytics, particularly in golf. And today I'd like to talk a little bit about golf statistics and specifically talk about the strokes gain metric. That has been one of the statistics that has absolutely revolutionized the game of golf. And there is still a reasonable amount of confusion around it. So I'd love to go through and explain my interpretation of it, how it can be used, and you know some of the improvements that could potentially be made on it in the future. As usual, please hit that like button if you enjoy the video. And if you'd like to see more content like this, please subscribe. So for a little history lesson, Strokes Gained was created by Mark Brody, who is a Columbia Business School professor. I believe he specializes in finance, computational finance. And he had this interest in golf, and he recognized that golf, uh, in golf, it was difficult to compare shots apples to apples. It was difficult to say, hey, a putt, um, you know, was that a good putt compared to the quality of this drive? So strokes gained helps us to tackle exactly that problem. It lets us compare shots, apples to apples, to each other. This concept isn't actually new in sports. This was done in baseball previous to golf. So instead of comparing shots, apples to apples, in baseball you'd like to compare players, apples to apples. And that can be difficult when they are playing different positions. So if you want to compare a pitcher to a shortstop, how do you do that? And this wins above replacement stat actually allows you to compare them based on wins. In golf, you're comparing these based on the value of a shot. Now, strokes gained has been incredible for golfers and, and their improvement because it lets people evaluate where they stand relative to other players. So the way we we're able to calculate the value of individual shots is basing it against a, ben a benchmark or an aggregate. So strokes gained is calculated by taking all the shots hit from a specific distance or all the shots hit on a hole and seeing how your shot compares to that benchmark. This does depend on the sample or the pool that you're using. So strokes gained as we know it is using only professional golfers data. So if a professional golfer hits a better than average shot, they will have positive strokes gained on that shot. And if they hit a worse than average shot, they will have negative strokes gained on that shot. The best way to explain this is by using an example. So let's not think about the shots right now. Let's think about an individual hole. So let's say we have a par four on a golf course. Um, and the average score on that hole for professionals is 4.1. So on average, it takes a professional golfer 4.1 shots to get it in the hole. Now, if I came along and I made a par, I made a four, that would mean that I picked up 0.1 shots on the hole. So I would have positive 0.1 strokes gained on that hole because I'm playing it 0.1 shots better than the average. I'm gaining that much on the field. If we do that for all 18 holes and we sum all those up, some, some holes I might have a worse score. So let's say it's a par five and the average score for the field is 4.5, and I make a 5, that means I lose 0.5 strokes to the field. So if we add those up over the course of the whole round, you will have the amount of strokes that I've gained on the field over the course of the entire round. And the same thing goes for the entire tournament, etc. It can also go the other way, where we're looking at the strokes gained not by round or by tournament or by hole, but by individual shot. And that's where it gets really interesting. For strokes gained on a shot, let's use the most simple example possible. From a ton of data collected, we know that on a 10-foot putt, it usually takes the average professional golfer around 1.5 strokes to get it into the hole. So they almost they make it about 50% of the time. So if I were to make that putt, that 10-footer, that means that I would pick up half a stroke on the field. If I were to miss that putt, assuming I didn't hit it way by, I would likely lose uh, about a half a stroke to the field. If you aggregate all of the putts that you hit and the amount of strokes gained on just those, you'll get your strokes gained putting for the round or for the tournament. And you can extrapolate this out further and further. So if we wanted to look at an iron shot, you see 
basically how far they are and how many strokes that they are expected to make uh, from that range. Based on where they hit it, you subtract how many putts that they're expected to take from that range, uh, from, from the distance that they hit it from. And they subtract that from the, uh, the expected value. And so through that, you can go all the way back looking at approach shots, looking at tee shots, and you can isolate each individual part of the game. You know, this is really interesting, especially when you're looking at putting approach around the greens and driving, because you can see which players outperform the field in those areas. And you can see for each individual course, what characteristics, what elements of the game were most important for scoring. So stroke gain was initially calculated using dynamic programming which means every time a new shot is recorded, it would dynamically update all of the shot logs. After they got a certain amount of data, that wasn't necessary, and it's all based on benchmarks. So they know that a shot from X amount of yards in a certain lie is a, a professional player is expected to get the ball in the hole in a certain number of strokes. So just like in our putting example, a 10 foot putt, a professional golfer is expected to make that in 1.5 strokes. And that is what is known as the baseline or the benchmark. And everything is done based on that. So I should note that strokes gained is based mainly on two factors. So it is based on the distance and the type of lie. So the type of lie is, is it in the rough? Is it in the fairway? Is it in a bunker, etc.? Or is it on the green? Um, and the distance is based on, on yards uh, from the pit. While strokes gained is a revolutionary metric, there still are a few challenges with it um, that some I think will, will improve and get fixed, but some will, will always be a challenge with this metric. So the first thing is that, that currently strokes gained does not take into account other factors than just distance and lie. So if you're looking at, at a putt, there are some putts that are significantly harder than others. A downhill slider that's 10 feet uh, is going to be a lot harder than a straight uphill 10 footer and each putt is accounted for in the same way as just like a normal 10 footer. The law of large numbers suggests that that should even itself out. They should have roughly the same number of putts from those different ranges. But if you're looking at an individual golfer, you're looking at something in isolation that makes uh, that value that you're getting uh, potentially skewed. It also doesn't take into account wind or if your ball's in a divot, or even the, the different rough lanes, the different courses. Each individual course is normalized for the conditions, but it isn't necessarily normalized based on each individual lie and distance attribute. So for my experience, strokes gained is a really valuable metric for comparing players against each other, but it has some challenges when you're comparing players against themselves. Because strokes gain is normalized against the field, the field strength is a huge factor um, in making that calculation. And if you're trying to compare one player tournament to tournament, the strength of field is going to have a significant impact on their performance. You'll still be able to understand general trend, but if you're trying to look at strokes gain numbers as a you know, a unit of comparison and you're trying to understand magnitude, that's going to be very difficult using this metric. Overall, I think strokes gained is a brilliant statistic. It solves a lot of problems with the traditional golf statistics that we have today, where they're not necessarily meaningful. So for example, fairways and regulation doesn't necessarily mean a whole lot when related to scoring or greens and regulation or the number of putts. These things are dramatically improved upon by strokes gained. On the other hand, I think strokes gained does have a ways to go uh, to be the, you know, uh, the elite benchmark, the number one metric in golf. So thank you so much for watching. Hopefully this was informative. Uh, please let me know if you have any questions about strokes gained in the comment section below. As usual, have a great one.